Hey guys, it's Hink here. So have you ever wondered about the origins of enlargement? Uh, you know, I don't know if I'm just a huge nerd, but, but I certainly have. And I actually found a paper today that actually takes us through basically the historical perspective of PE in general. For those that don't know, PE is penile enlargement. So the title of this paper is Penile and Foreskin Stretches Practices Through Time and Culture. Okay, what it does is it basically looks at the origin of PE in all of these different historical cultures. I think it's really cool. So let's jump into it. So it is interesting that in the background of this paper, they say without a doubt, there's clear medical evidence that enlargement worked, which is actually nice to see that published because unlike so many people will try to tell you, there is urologist supported and urologist published data showing that penile enlargement is possible and works, especially with things like extenders and in some cases even pumping. But they bring up this anecdotal story of a cave drawing that it showed a dude with his meat that was like literally down his leg. And this was from over 8,000 years ago. Men since basically the creation of men, since basically Adam, have been obsessed with the size of their beef. But what this paper does is it does a deep dive into basically all of the published literature that they could find regarding penile enhancement, penile enlargement, and even foreskin restoration and foreskin enlargement. So first they start looking at different tribes throughout the world. And there's this Polynesian tribe where they actually would have the guys that would put their jimmies in this essentially a Chinese finger trap. They would use a, the vines of a plant and make this device where you put your jimmy in and then it kind of, I'll have Callie edit in some B-roll of basically a Chinese finger trap or at least a picture of it. You can imagine that they would put Put it in there and it would apply constant tension and that was one of the origins of pe that they found and then there was actually tribes in peru and in africa that would literally hang weights from their members in order to enlarge them now in this paper they did say that the techniques that they were using yes it absolutely would increase their length but it ended up causing a decrease in girth because of the actual trauma from the way that they were doing it causing essentially erectile dysfunction. So it would be a long, non-usable member. I forgot that guy's name, but there's some guy in Mexico that basically has like literally like a 17-inch hog. But of that, his actual beef is only about seven, maybe eight inches at the most. And the rest of it is just foreskin. So it's an, it's and it's not a usable member. Anyways, something similar. Guys, before we move on, I actually have an enlargement course. The link is available in the description and it is literally based on real medical science. That's how I gained an inch and a half over these past three years and over an inch in girth using the techniques that I literally developed. I take you through it step by step. The great news is the techniques only take about 30 to 45 minutes per day. So if you're interested, check it out. So guys, next we're going to be talking about ancient Rome and they use this device. It's called a kinodesmi. But basically what it is, is it's this like weird thong like device where it would actually grab the foreskin and in an attempt to enlarge it. I don't think current culture is like that, but especially in the historical context that they're talking about here, they were kind of obsessed about long foreskins. That was particularly attractive to have a like a foreskin significantly longer than the flaccid penis. They did these a lot of techniques to to do that. And if we can safely put this up on YouTube, I'll put a picture of the drawing up of the like the little contraption that they use where it basically looks like almost like Borat's thong coming across the top in order to enlarge the foreskin. So next they talk about ancient India. This is pretty wild here. So what they had, if you actually look into the Karma Sutra, they have this ancient technique. And basically what they would do is they would take their D and then they would rub it through the bristles of insects, then soak it in oils for 10 nights and then put it in bristles again. And then basically lay on a cot with basically a hole cut out and let their member basically hang down through the cot. And that would lead to penile enlargement. They also did a relatively similar technique where they would actually rub their D on a plant. And the plant's name is Physalis flexuosa. Okay, might have butchered that pronunciation. Forgive me. Basically, guys, what this plant is, interestingly, is actually that the plant that's responsible for ashwagandha. So like one of the supplements in, you know, our vitality that's been proven to decrease stress levels and actually increase testosterone. I was trying to think of any like direct correlation there but I really on a physiologic level. However, what they argue is that it actually caused either of those two techniques, the rubbing on the plant or the insects with the oil led to essentially edema or a reaction that was that caused more of like a superficial penile enlargement, not actually true enlargement of the penile tissue. All right, guys, so next we're going to be talking about jelking, okay? My literal arch nemesis. What they found is that this technique takes, dates back to Sudanese tribes and, and all other tribes in the Middle East. Unlike what a lot of people think is that like Thunder's Place is the founding father of like all PE, it actually wasn't, guys, and I'm being a little facetious there. Please, all my Thunder's Place bros, don't get all, you know, all upset with me. It's just a joke. But there's actually a rumor, okay? And they couldn't find like clinical evidence to prove this but there is a rumor that the jelking tradition so for those that 
don't know, it's basically a technique where you put your fingers around your D and like, okay, side and like push the blood up towards the end. It's very dangerous, leads to high rates of injury. But they said that it started actually as a tradition where the Sudanese fathers prepared their sons for marriage by basically joking them, okay? And it's unclear to me whether or not that the fathers would do that to the sons or maybe the fathers would just teach the sons. I don't know. Either way, it's a little weird to me. Who am I to judge other cultures? You know, do you? A little father-son PE bonding. But that's kind of wild to me. I, I don't know. Can you imagine that? But they also talk about how joking has kind of come into mainstream. Guys, I made, you know, I made a video about Penguin Z Zero. I made a video about Derek More Plates More Dates talking about joking. And as far as actually enlargement, joking is one of the more mainstream topics. It also happens to be one of the most dangerous things you can do. Hence why I get so many clients on my Patreon. If you need to reach me, patreon.com slash docking. But actually, here's an article in GQ, guys, talking about like joking. Fortunately, it says, here's joking and here's why you shouldn't do it. But still, it's it's making people aware of this joking technique. But they do include some pretty interesting quotes in this paper. I'm going to paraphrase this for time purposes, but basically says that joking is based on the theory of tissue remodeling over time. And it's involving basically massaging blood into the penis, leading to growth. But unfortunately, there have been no robust clinical trials evaluating the efficacy of this technique. And some clinicians caution against its routine use, including excessive or aggressive manipulations due to concerns for potential fibrosis and plaque formation, okay? So so even in this article, they acknowledge that it's dangerous. Guys, quite honestly, all PE is dangerous and you are at a risk of fibrosis long-term. And that's why I created our Safeguard product. It's available on leviathansubs.com and Amazon if you are interested. All of these ingredients are clinically proven to reduce fibrosis. My video is coming on it too. So next we're going to be talking about vacuum devices and traction devices. So interestingly, here's a picture of one of the first vacuum devices that was ever patented back in 1959 and it, by this guy named Freddie Sell, and they called it the Erector. You can see it's pretty interesting technology. I mean, back in essentially the 1960s, so really not that long ago. But since then, there has been a boom in these devices where now you can go online and search up like, you know, enlargement device or extender and you can find them essentially a dime a dozen. Problem is most of them are overpriced, especially for basically what it costs to manufacture the device. Part of the reason we created peak male physique because, you know, these things have become so ubiquitous that even a guy like me, a clown in a mask, actually can sell high quality products and make them available for you guys. So... If you're interested, you could check that out. But it's just, it's very interesting how they talk about there's this boom in consumer demand and how it has gone through the roof. And now there's all these different products. Some of them actually have some form of like FDA backing. Normally it's not for enlargement purposes, but in general health purposes. So next they're going to talk about social media. And it's funny, they basically talk about Reddit. And it's it's really funny to me because at the time this article was published, they say, there's the r slash penis size at 7,700 members and r slash jelk at 420 members. It's like the biggest online forums. And it's just funny because r slash hink, which I just created, is basically at 4K, right around 4,000 members right now. And of course, getting bigger, I like to at least pretend like I at least co-founded with BD, even though he created it, is at like well over 100K. It's more like 105, 110K. And then even at the time when he created getting bigger, r slash a joke for you was at somewhere like 30,000 members. Now getting bigger has become the biggest online forum kind of worldwide, which is kind of cool, especially to be a part of that. But they do caution because they say, unfortunately, most of these users are not experts and they're going off anecdotal evidence and they might not be teaching the actual safest techniques. You do need to be very careful with who you take advice from. And that's literally one of the reasons why I created this channel, because I wanted to get real science-based medically sound information out there to prevent all the injuries you guys would not believe the injuries and the stupid crap that i see people and i don't blame people for not knowing better but once again it's just it's unbelievable to me once again i won't call out the company that sells this ebook but i literally had a client that injured themselves by following one of the routines from an ebook i'm not at all talking about bd okay so it, just rule that out of your mind it's not bd it's another company i'm not going to put them on blast but the guy literally injured himself because of the way that they were describing how to clamp. He said, basically, I wish I would have found your channel sooner. Be careful with who you take advice from. Even me, guys. Fact check yourself. So, guys, I thought this was a really cool video, learning a little bit about the history of the PE. If you want me to do an even deeper dive, let me know in the comments. If you disagree or you think I missed something, please let me know in the comments as well. I'd love to make a part two video to this. 
Remember, guys, you are enough just as you are. There's nothing wrong with self-improvement. Until the next one, guys, peace and love. And guys, if you want to support me, once again, all my supplements are available. They're all backed by actual medical literature, leviathansupps.com. I have my enlargement course. The link is in the description. I also have a course on hard flaccid. The link is in the description. If you need any sort of enlargement devices, peakmalephysique.com is your go-to one-stop shop. It's going to be cheaper than anywhere else you can find. My subreddit is r slash hink. Also check out r slash getting bigger. And if you like the work that we do here, especially the work my video editor Callie does, you can buy him a coffee with the link in the description and also get over 20 6K wallpapers. If you're interested, please check it out. We appreciate your support. And if you're watching this long, I appreciate you even more. Peace and love, guys.